Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is one beautiful SUV coupe. That is the slightly refreshed 2024 Alfa Romeo Stelvio. And yes, I know I'm gonna butcher this in the Competizione trim. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour, uh, show you inside and out, and then we have a special guest for our driving portion. Stay tuned. All right, gearheads, before we get into this one, I do want to say a huge thank you to the team over at Stellantis at Alfa Romeo for supplying me with this beautiful SUV while I'm in Detroit for the North America International Auto Show. Huge, huge thanks uh, for putting me up in style while I'm up here. I may have also booked a hotel slightly further away so I could spend more time behind the wheel of this one, but you got to do what you got to do, right? While we are up here with the hood popped, why don't we go ahead and lift that hood to reveal what is underneath. So previously I have been in other Stelvio models, but those have both been the high performance uh, quadrifolio version. This is the most luxurious trim, the Competizione. And that means we get a two liter turbocharged four, which on the face of it doesn't sound like much, but when it makes 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque, made it to a ZF eight speed automatic and the Q4 all wheel drive of Alfa Romeo. This is actually a pretty fun, fast, potent little beast uh, that I have truly enjoyed driving. In fact, in my time with this, I keep going back to the Audi SQ5 uh, that we drove earlier this year. I know these aren't bang, uh, power for power competitors, but the Q5 version is uh, that little uh, two liter four cylinder in the Audi makes 261 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque with a seven speed automatic and their Quattro all wheel drive. So if you want a powerful, fun, uh, beautiful SUV coupe, and you wanna kind of break from the tradition of people with Audis and Lexuses, get you an Alfa Romeo. And since we are talking about the competition of this one, yes, I feel like uh, the biggest, most obvious competitor to this would be an Audi Q5 Sportback, maybe a Jaguar F-Pace, uh, but this really is kind of in a league of its own when it comes to style. Alfa Romeos are just beautiful vehicles. And for 2024, we do get a slight facelift on this one. And well, I'll go ahead and come down here and show you. The headlights are the biggest telltale sign. The previous version had kind of an outline in uh, the headlight housing for the running lights. New for 2024 are these tri-lobe uh, LED lights, running lights, turn signals that give it just a little bit more personality up front here. We get a slightly revised fascia as well, but this thing is just gorgeous behind that triangular grill up front. Uh, Alfa Romeos are just gorgeous. And this thing will absolutely set you apart from the crowd in those Audis, Lexuses, and other vehicles in this price range. As this one sits, it's just over $63,000. And like I said, it is the most luxurious of the lineup, but not the most powerful. For that, you'd want the Quadrifolio. While we're up here, I'll also go ahead and point out right above uh, the shadow of my head over there is the sensor for the full speed adaptive cruise control. We do have parking sensors, but interestingly enough, no 360 cameras in this one. So I don't know if that's a style thing or if it's just showing the age of this platform because it has been around, well, for some time. Coming around to the side, we can truly appreciate first this color my goodness when i got the paperwork for this one and i saw the name was moonlight gray i kind of rolled my eyes i was like ah oh, this isn't going to be a beautiful vehicle but in gray that really just doesn't seem to fit until i saw this in the parking lot this is a flat paint that is a little blue a little silver a little gray 
and a lot beautiful. It shows off all the curves and lines on this vehicle, and it is at an absolute head turner. This thing is gorgeous, and the way it just catches the light on some of these corners is so beautiful. And looky right there, Alfa Romeo. Lots of little Easter eggs in this one as well. But yes, this thing is truly beautiful and has quite the stance to it. Uh, coming down to the wheels and tires, we've got these very large 21 inch black wheels with the five hole design. They, Alpha doesn't talk about how many spokes it has. It's got five holes, which I mean, if you really want to get technical about it, there are more than five holes in this wheel, but that's beside the point. Interestingly enough, because these are large 21 inch wheels with these large five holes, you can see that the front brakes are yeah, a little small. You would expect something bigger in a performance SUV like this, but I guess that is why you would want to step up to the Quadrifoglio. They are wrapped in a continental tires. And uh, like I said, 21 inch wheels with some nice performance rubber. And then we have an adaptive suspension back there of, unfortunately, it's a little too tight to get in there and show you, but we'll talk about that a little more when we get inside. Coming around to the side, you can see the SUV coupe-like proportions on this one. This is a little less SUV coupe-like than some modern interpretations of it from Mercedes or, yes, Audi. Uh, it's a little more hunchback-ish uh, as you get back to the back, but it still does it in a very alpha way. Alphas are just beautiful rolling works of art, and this one is no exception. I did want to give you a little bit closer look here uh, at the tires in the light. They are 255-40R21 Continental Cross Contacts. Coming around to the back, you can see we've got a little reworked back end as well. Just a little nip and tuck uh, for the 2024 model year. You can see we have LED head, our tail lights, LED turn signals, LED lights all the way around in this, which is absolutely nice. We do have this Q4 badge to denote it's all wheel drive in this Chrome Stelvio, but I'll give it a slight knock for the exhaust. We've got these very big fake exhaust surrounding the small or normal regular exhaust again if you want more performance more athletic looking i guess get the quadrifolio coming back to the back we do have a power opening rear hatch that exposes a rather large cargo area it is deep and it is tall in fact, uh, the measurements on this cargo uh, space total 18 and a half cubic feet. Going back to that Audi Q5, uh, you only get 18 cubic feet in that one. Fold the rear seats in this one and you can uh, open up 56 and a half cubic feet. That Audi only gets 52.3 when you fold their rear seats down. Speaking of folding rear seats down, we have uh, access to do that from the back of uh, the cargo area so you don't have to go around to do it and it is actually a 40 20 40 but you can see that 20 percent in the middle rides with the driver's side but you can fold that down independently we do get this rather large single panel false load floor that does open up a little extra storage underneath you can see we have fix a flat down here and then a lot of foam for sound deadening this really has been a quiet vehicle while on the road and you can see we do have some tie downs if you were to get the i'm sure optional cargo net uh, to keep stuff in place before we close the hatch i do want to call out we do have top tethers all the way across in that back seat and unlike some other stellantis products that put the hatch close button on the side this is an italian vehicle after all and they kind of do their own thing so they break with stellantis tradition and we've got the hatch close button there on the hatch itself. Before we get into this one, I do want to show you the key. It is a parts sharing key with some other Stellantis products, but it is a proximity key that can be kept in your wallet, your purse, your wallet, your pocket, or your purse, uh, wherever you keep your key. Um, but yes, it feels very much like my father-in-law's RAM key. We do have lock, unlock, hatch release, remote start, and panic. 
and you can deploy a physical key from this but like i said can keep it in your pocket purse wherever it is a little on the bulky side we do have passive entry here so to unlock it you just put your hand on the back of the door right there to lock it back you can push the button right there i will note that the, that is only on the front doors so if you've got a kid that you want to load up you're going to have to open the front door before you open the back no real big deal there as we look to the door panel we can see we've got leather and metal and metal and metal lots of really nice exquisite uh, pieces in here uh, really welcoming you to the inside of this Alfa Romeo again this Competizione is the most luxurious trim you've got your lock buttons up here three person memory seat your hatch release, uh, your mirror controls, your window controls, and your window lockout. A little bit of storage down below here. And yes, metallic uh, grill for the Harman Kardon tweeter there on the side. I'm gonna go ahead and pop down here and show you a little unconventional in their approach to power seats. You get your normal controls for your seat controls and your lumbar, but you may be wondering what these two buttons are for. That is for the adjustable lumbar. And let me tell you, the lumbar in this vehicle, the seats in this vehicle, just coddle and cradle you. Again, they've made my extra time with my extra commute uh, to the auto show to and from my hotel an absolute dream. This being the Competizione trim, we get that embroidered on the headrest underneath the alpha logo lots of contrasting red and uh, silver stitching in this one as well these seats are absolutely gorgeous and like i said they coddle you and cradle you popping in to the inside we can see uh, the binocular style gauge cluster here and uh, i'll go ahead and fire it up it's really easy to find the start stop button once you're used to it it's not blocked by the steering wheel because it's on the steering wheel and that thing fires to life we get all the uh, alfa romeo logos and things like that but i'm going to start over my left knee and work my way across so up here we do have some again unconventional places for some things light controls are in their normal place as are the brightness controls for the gauge cluster but your parking sensor and your auto start stop for when you're in traffic in that engine cuts off to save fuel economy are all over here by your light controls a little weird place for it but again once you get used to it, it, it it's not really that big of a deal really like the air vents uh, in this vehicle let's get rid of some of that lens flare uh, they are uh, metallic and they just stand out they're a nice design touch all the way around coming back uh, to the steering wheel and that binocular gauge cluster that is fully digital. Really like it. We, it's housed under this leather wrap dash with uh, contrasting red stitching. Just a very premium experience as you look up here. The fonts up here are even uh, something special that rec uh, recall alphas of old that uh, just look um, that much nicer. Some thought and attention to detail. The buttons on the steering wheel are a little less intuitive uh, than I would like. So this right here, my brain tells me it should be the volume roller, but you can see that is these buttons right here. This is actually a multifunctional uh, roller wheel. It can do everything from tuning to if you push this button right here, it highlights different areas of the binocular center, uh, binocular information center here. Uh, to let you scroll through different information. I really like to keep it on my driver assist. If I push it again, I can change all the information over here inside the tachometer. So uh, just an interesting way to go about doing things uh, with this roller wheel. I can't tell you how many times I've quickly rolled across it thinking I was turning the volume up only to realize I was starting the song over. Then we have all our adaptive cruise buttons over here and I'll go ahead and call it out. You can probably see them peeking from behind. We have real metal, very large column mounted paddle shifters in this. So yes, we have a ZF eight speed automatic, but we have these uh, racing style column mounted very nice metallic uh, paddle shifters in this one that I will say one knock against them is just their overall size I can't tell you how many times I've reached back 
only to be blocked by it as I'm trying to hit the blinker button here. So again, something you would get used to over time in my three days with it, I already kind of have. So I, I would only imagine a little more time in this uh, would make it that much easier and muscle memory would take over from there. But I really like them. Makes me feel like I'm in a Ferrari or something. Moving over here, we get a nice Uconnect uh, infotainment system with everything kind of in these tiles. We've got performance pages. You can control your climate from up here. Very uh, nice updated unit. Not the best that I've seen, but uh, typical uh, Uconnect stuff in here. We even get performance pages because, well, we are in an alpha. Nice vents here that aren't uh, placed too high or too low. They do a good job of getting the air out to you. There is your uh, hazard button, which I'll go ahead and call out. You hear the sound of the blinkers there? And just, again, thoughtfulness and attention to detail. While we're talking about sounds in this vehicle, the alert that you get if you're in traffic and the vehicle in front of you is stopping or has stopped and maybe you're still accelerating because you're trying to get around somebody. It's like an Italian horn uh, that gives you an alert. It, it, I may or may not have heard it a couple times and it makes me smile every time I do hear it. Dual zone climate control up here. We do have heated front seats and a heated steering wheel. No ventilation in this one. USB-A port up here for power, 12 volt outlet for power. And then we've got this shade that is very nicely covered for our two cup holders with, I guess, a phone holder here. And listen up, auto manufacturers who depend too heavily on gloss black plastic. This is how you do a center console. This is very nice and tasteful. Uh, it gives uh, just a little bit of class and elegance to it. Uh, I have not been in it uh, where the sun has hit it and caused a lot of glare. It is the same material that is up here on the, the dash. It is shiny, but it isn't just overly glary because as you can see, there's a lot of uh, differentiation to it. So we've got a lot of uh, this in here with a little bit of plastic black or gloss black plastic used sparingly. Over here, we have our volume and tuning controls. We can go left and right, uh, skip tracks and whatnot. Here, we've got our DNA, our three different drive modes in this vehicle. D is dynamic, N is natural driving, and A is something like acceptable uh, economy or something. They really had to stretch to get that A in there. I've driven it in all, uh, my favorite is obviously the D setting, which if you come down here, it illuminates the shock button and you can turn the adaptive dampers to soft. So while it may turn the engine and everything up, else up, uh, you can turn those dampers back down to soft. Still have an athletic uh, tuning to the engine and transmission, but a softer ride. But yeah, just leave it in D you know where it's at. We do have this rotary controller here that also uh, works with the Uconnect system up there. I like having options and a couple of buttons here for home and settings. Right here is our Qi wireless charger. It's worked relatively well the few times I've used it, but wireless, uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto does not exist. We had to use wired connections, which can be found here. You have it your choice of USB-A or USB-C. There is an aux port in here. And interestingly enough, Alpha wants you to keep the key right there. Don't know why, I haven't done it. Coming back to these seats, they are gorgeous and beautiful, but I did want to call out one more thing. They have an adjustable thigh support here with a built-in crumb catcher for all the times that you eat in your Alfa Romeo, right? So uh, you can truly get comfortable in this vehicle lots of different options. Looking up here, we have got a dual stage opening uh, roller shade for the very large panoramic roof with the very large glass section that opens. And even with that large panoramic roof, I've still got plenty of headroom at 510. I'm very comfortable in this front seat, but let's pop back into that back seat, see what that's like. Coming up to the back doors of the Stelvio, as I open them up, I do want to call out this little design feature right here that is on two other vehicles that I know of. That is the smaller Alfa Romeo Tonali and its twin in body structure only, the Dodge Hornet. 
which we have tested here on this channel. It's just a nice little design cue. Again, Alphas are known for their design, for being truly beautiful. That's just a cool feature. Back here on the back door, we get some more leather and metal and metal. Very nice, we get lock and unlock here. You actually lock and unlock it from the same button. Window controls back here all around, very nice. We do have a little extra storage in the door as well. And then coming to the seats themselves, I wanna go ahead and call out, they do recline. We've got that down here, very interesting place for it. But as you look at the seats, they mimic the design of the front, but the bolsters well, they're gone. The front seats are definitely where you're going to want to spend time, especially if this vehicle is being driven spiritedly. Let's go ahead and pop in behind myself at 510. And you can see I've got plenty of room behind the front seat. This is a hard plastic uh, back with the leather up here. We do have some map nets back here in the back for holding some stuff and some googly eyes for uh, vents back here on the back of the center console. We do get two USB-A ports down here with three-stage heated outboard seats uh, here in the back. Because of the lens flare and everything, I'm actually gonna move over here to the passenger side over this tall center tunnel that uh, yes, this is an all wheel drive vehicle. So we do have to have uh, a drive shaft going back to the back. Coming over here, we do have a pull down center armrest with a couple cup holders, Alfa Romeo spelled out for you there. And I talked about it being a 40-20-40. You can fold the whole thing down if you need some long items, some uh, skis for when you're in the Italian Alps, right? Coming to me, I'm fairly comfortable back here. My hat is pretty close to touching the roof because of the uh, uh, sunroof in this one. But again, pulling that uh, recline button. Oh no, they don't recline. They only fold forward. So there you go. Um, this is your seating position. It's not bad. It, it's comfortable. It's just nowhere near as good as these front seats where I have been and will continue to spend all my time in this vehicle, which is a nice segue to uh, the driving portion where we've got a special guest with us today. All right, gearheads, I told you I had a special guest today. This is Bill Taylor, the vehicle nanny. Bill, nice to actually have you in the flesh. In my hometown. <laughs> I know. Uh, I've had you on the podcast a couple of times, more than a couple of times. Yes. Um, been uh, to Michigan a few times and seen you each, but actually fun to get you uh, in the seat with me here in this 2024 Alfa Romeo nice. Stelvio Competizione. E easy for you to say. <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> I've, I've had to practice off camera. So uh, we'll kind of bounce off one another and talk about the interior, the driving impressions. You're a uh, former GM employee. I am. So uh, coming into the Italian realm, the Stellantis realm, you might have a different lens uh, on this vehicle. But uh, what are your initial thoughts and impressions on this one? Well, I've not driven it, so yeah. strictly on the visuals yeah. and interiors usually would set things apart. Mm -hmm. uh, and good first impression. I mean, I love the, the materials in here. Uh, leather wrap dash. Leather wrap dash. The, the red stitching is a nice touch. No piano black. Yes. Which is <laughs> nice to see. Yes. And so many brands overdo it, and uh, it's nice to see. Um, a conservative amount. There's just a little down here. It's not where you're going to be you know, right. sticking your finger. Right. Um, I'm a bit of a steering wheel snob, uh -huh. and I like this one. Oh, this this is a good one. So leather wrapped. We've got your perforations here on the inside. Your start stop uh, to turn the vehicle on and off right here, and then these very large metallic paddle shifters. So. That is the good part. I've already covered how annoying some of the buttons are. They're Italian odd <laughs> in the way they go about their approach. Quirky, but, maybe? Yes, quirky. You know, you mentioned the start-stop button earlier. I actually like it there. Yeah. You know, so many vehicles, including every one that I own, it's tucked yeah. behind the steering yeah, wheel. Yeah, you have to, where is it again? It's, but here, It's kind of like there for your thumb. Yeah. Your left thumb hits it, boom. Right there in front of you. But... Uh, this one's got a turbocharged four-cylinder, and I should have really given it the beans merging on here. 
uh, 280, almost 300 horsepower, over 300 pound-feet of torque, all-wheel drive. It's actually a pretty peppy little engine that, let's see, I mean, it'll pull. So it's probably a pretty heavy vehicle. Yeah, it, it is heavy. I, I've been surprised at how spry this vehicle has been when the transmission figures out what I want it to do. <laughs> so as a driver, how do you feel? Is it well planted? Is it balanced? It, it is. And uh, like I said, it, it's spry when the transmission knows what to do. The all wheel drive, make sure to put the power down. Some zero to 60 acceleration runs that I did in an empty parking lot yesterday proved to be very fun and exciting. I'll go ahead and put those in right here. Gonna do a little bit of brake torque. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this thing is quick. Foot firmly on the brake, brake torque it, and let go. Oh my goodness. This thing is fast. And being that it's all wheel drive, you know, it's actually making uh, connections at all four tires, really uh, getting that power down, making the most of the power that it does have available to it. But uh, it's been fun. It's been easy to drive in traffic, to merge around people, uh, to drive the true Texan way. Not friendly as the signs say, but fast and aggressive, uh, getting around stop traffic. And well, you're in Michigan now, so yeah. you've got to change lanes often. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you've noticed that. We don't like, we do not have patience for people who are slower than us. Yes. Uh, I've done a lot of passing and been passed a lot yeah. so as i play with and learn this vehicle for sure you know one thing i've noticed just in the short ride is the ride feels firm but not harsh yes. and harshness especially with our roads <laughs> and we've talked about potholes yeah. and whatnot before um it's it's a nice quality i do notice a little bit of wind noise just a little yeah, again a little bit this more is than an expected. old platform yeah uh dates back a little ways but yeah, for the most part, very calm and compliant. I'm gonna, we're driving in in mode right now, which is like natural drive. Natural, is that um, part of the DNA system? Part of the DNA, yes, Not but we'll turn that. it to D or dynamic, which does stiffen up the springs a little bit. You can hear, gives a little more throatiness to that uh, four cylinder. A bit better throttle response yes. probably. How's yes. the, does the steering uh, Change. Very, very tight. Yeah. yeah, there it is. So, yes. Uh, there went my breakfast. Uh, this this has been a fun, and I highly recommend putting it in D, though if you uh, don't want these stiffer springs of D, uh, you can hit this little spring button right here, and it softens okay. it up. Okay, so there's a little variability in there. Yes. Or customization, yes. maybe. Yes. Yeah. It's the only time that spring button lights up or does anything. Yep. is in D mode of the DNA. The A, I feel like they had to stretch it. It's something like actual economy or something. <laughs> it's a it's a modifier word before what it really is, and that's eco mode. <laughs> I'll, I'll put on screen what it really is. I can't remember. Marketing terms. Yeah, I, I saw I saw that. I, <laughs> it was clever. But yeah, because you get you know, yeah. DNA, DNA doesn't work. Yeah. So, right. you know, one thing I did notice too is the absence of squeaks and rattles, which very drive me nuts. And this is, I will judge a vehicle strictly on that. Mm -hmm. So, will everyone else worry about horsepower or, you know, speed? I like how it feels. I like the lack of harshness. And I definitely like a quiet body structure. Yeah, my time in this, I've been all over all kinds of northern roads and have heard nary a squeak or a rattle. This thing is buttoned down. Does not fit the Alfa Romeo stereotype. Granted, I know I am the first driver of this vehicle. We have less than a thousand miles on it. Okay. So there's still time. There's still <laughs> time. But yeah, you know, I know there's another channel that really talks up the uh, um, Julia, mm -hmm. you know, as, as being kind of a uh, myth buster when it comes mm -hmm. to the brand. So, you know, sometimes these old reputations are hard to fight. Yeah, but my, my time in this one, I mwah, I have I've loved it. And it reminds me- Is that me, an Italian? Yeah, mwah, okay. uh, it has reminded me of the Audi SQ5 uh, that we drove earlier this year. Okay. This isn't as powerful as the SQ5. This is more in line with the Q5 but is a much better looking vehicle than anything Audi puts out, anything Lexus puts out, anything the com competition 
uh, at sixty thousand dollars for a luxury two-row SUV. Well, I'd agree out. with that. And, you know, it, when the Stelvio first came out, I was really impressed with the curves, and mm -hmm. I think I once told you, you know, the nice hips on it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's face it, every vehicle is an SUV or a CUV. It feels like. Yeah. And so, how do you differentiate these things? Well, I think either go boxy or you go really curvy. And anything in the middle is just mainstream. Yeah. And this one seems to do it well. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not vanilla, would stand out in a crowd, and would set you apart from the Joneses. Yeah. Uh, I will say it is 66 degrees outside, but I've already noticed a feature, perhaps one of my biggest nitpicks of this one, and that is the engine start-stop uh, on this one. It really ki kills the air conditioning, and in my time with it, it's kicked on at inappropriate times, and the button is oddly over here, by the light control, but other than that, uh, it's been a fun one to drive around town. Yeah, it beats the Subaru start stop, yeah. which is like a kick in the butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a mule just kicked you. I I've been in vehicles that are so aggressive with it that they'll turn it on before I'm even at a full stop, which then brings you to a full stop. Wow. This one, uh, it it's subtle, but it comes on at all the wrong times. <laughs> so always turning that one off. Right. Even in D mode, which is kind of interesting that in your most dynamic drive mode that it wouldn't automatically uh, turn that off. So in your time with the vehicle last couple of days, what would be your biggest nitpick about how it drives? I, I would say that, the, the start stop. Yeah. Um, it just makes it sluggish uh, from a get go if you're in stop and go traffic. And like I said, sometimes the transmission has to think, oh, you want to go. And uh, as much as I like these very big column mounted paddles, uh, I am not the biggest fan of paddle shifters, even driving a six speed manual daily. Uh, my brain doesn't comprehend pull a paddle versus row through gears. Yeah. It, it's a different set of skills. <laughs> the paddle shift sold me on the vehicle I currently own because mm. I wanted a stick, but I really wasn't thrilled with the feel of the clutch on that yeah. vehicle. And so buddy of mine said, hey, don't forget, that's an eight speed with paddle shifters. I'm like, okay, that's just enough to put me over the edge. Yeah. But otherwise, like, it's quick, it's fun, makes makes some fun noises, it makes holds, good noises. holds the gears in D mode as well. Interesting. So, uh, that really is the secret sauce, is put it in D mode, that gets rid of most of the annoyances uh, once you turn that engine start stop off. I couldn't tell, does that change exhaust tone at all? I mean, I, sometimes with the... You know, I feel like it's a little noisier than uh, if we put it back in do you, get, do you get the pops at all? Pop, pop, no, pop, no, like mini? Pop, no, unfortunately. <laughs> that is one thing that is sorely lacking in this, is the true auditory experience. You have to st step up to the Quadrifoglio if you want all the noises Interesting. in your Stelvio. But I've been in a couple, have yet to get a really good review. Uh, fun fact, the first ever press vehicle I ever drove was a Stelvio Quadrifoglio. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it was at a media event in October of 2020. And since it was the first vehicle I ever drove, I really didn't know what I was doing on camera. So that video never saw the light of day. But uh, Bill, it has been a blast driving around your hometown with you here in Detroit, uh, getting to check out this Stelvio. Any final thoughts before we wrap this one up? No, I think with each mile we've driven, uh, I really like the vehicle. I think yeah. it, it feels very structurally strong, which I think is critical to the lack of squeaks and rattles. Mm -hmm. It's firm, but not harsh, and it appears to be well buttoned up. So I, I'm impressed. Yeah, me too. Okay. So if you want to go check him out, go to vehiclenanny.com where he's constantly putting out fun articles. He's even got a project Camaro uh, <laughs> of his own that he's working on. Very excited to see how that evolves. You can find me and everything I do at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, everything at GT Garage Talk, or go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for me, behind the wheel of the Stelvio uh, Competizione, until next time, gearheads. <laughs> Bye. See ya.